What's going on everyone? Steven here. Today I'm bringing you the results of some data mining that I've been doing with the Borderlands 3 game files. In this video I'm going to share my findings in regards to the Bloody Harvest event, which is the first free content update that was announced at PAX West 2019 by Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford, who said players can expect this update within about a month or so after launch. With that said, let's begin with the handful of references I found in regards to customizations we can expect by way of the Bloody Harvest event. Heads, skins, and weapon trinkets, some or all of which might be acquired in part from the Bloody Harvest challenges we see referenced here. Now, for those of you who have no idea what these references are or what they mean, think of a filing cabinet chock full of accurately labeled folders that have corresponding files in them. If you wanted the files from a specific folder, then you could go find that folder by the label on its tab. These types of references, commonly called strings, are more or less the same thing for a game in how and where it references specific data. Moving on, here are references to two types of Bloody Harvest ghost enemies, the Haunted Punk and Bloody Harvest Ghost. That's about all I could glean from them in the computer memory surrounding those references, so we'll just have to wait and see what these enemies are made of. Next up, we have references to Balix, the AI trapped inside of a teddy bear that's voiced by rapper Ice-T. Here we can see some sort of dialogue event related to Balix. A ship, probably the Sanctuary 3, and the Bloody Harvest event. To note, those UEXP and UAsset file extensions are in reference to Unreal Engine files, Unreal Engine being the name of the game engine that Borderlands 3 was developed in. Up next, we have some comical text references to the Bloody Harvest, my personal favorite being the pumpkin spice flavored water. These seem like quotes that will actually be spoken by a player or perhaps an NPC, but as with the ghost enemies, we'll just have to wait and see how they shake out. Now, if you think you're going to unlock this event before it's officially released, you'll be disappointed to know that I unpacked all of the game files and discovered that hardly any of the requisite files for the event appear to be present. For starters, the Balix files I noted a minute ago are just references to file names that will presumably exist once they include the event in an update. Also, here we see a handful of references to a patch DLC folder, which includes a Bloody Harvest subfolder. After unpacking the game files, that Bloody Harvest subfolder does not exist. Finally, speaking of the patch DLC directory, tucked away in the game files is a configuration file apparently heavily utilized during development, which contains level remapping references to the Bloody Harvest, and perhaps even the next free event, which will follow the Bloody Harvest event, the Maliwan Takedown. In his PAX West 2019 announcement, Randy Pitchford said that the Maliwan takedown was akin to raids from Borderlands 2, so perhaps this is a leftover reference that has since changed, or perhaps this reference is something different altogether. Either way, that's going to wrap it up for our fun little data mining journey. Uh, I have a ton of Borderlands 3 things to bring to you in the future, so be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss a thing. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll just talk to you all in the next one. Take care.